Today, I am going to walk you through the process I took in making a hammock stand out of steel pipe. I didn't see any other videos on YouTube about this, so I decided to create my own and take y'all along the journey. Getting to the point straight off the bat, here are some of my measurements for my project if you don't want to hear me yapping the whole time. These are the things that I used in order to finish the project. If you do not have a welder or anything that can cut metal in a 90, 22 and a half, or 30 degree angle, then this project will be very difficult to complete. First thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to find some pipe that's long enough for all your measurements. So I've got these three here. Those are going to be serving as the body. One's going to be the middle and then two are going to be the arms that go outward. Um, so once you select them, then if there's any rust or paint left on it, then you want to clear it up. I'm using a wire brush because I kind of like the rustic rustic finish that it has. See, you can tell there's a little bit of paint still on it and everything, but it adds to that rustic finish. And whenever it's all done and welded all together, I'm just going to clear coat it and leave that rustic look on there. So let's start cleaning some of that rust off. As this time lapse continues, I wanted to talk a little bit about safety. It's always important to wear the proper safety equipment when working. As you can see in this video, I am wearing a respirator, safety glasses, face shield, and gloves, as well as hearing protection. It's not the most comfortable setup, but it keeps me protected. I always wear some sort of face covering, such as a respirator, when removing paint or rust from metal. It's never good to be breathing those particles in, especially for an extended amount of time. Once I finished clearing all the pipes from rust or paint, I began to square off one of the ends on all of my pipes. It's important to square them off in order to get an accurate measurement for the angled cuts later on. So let's go ahead and do that. Once you have your pipes squared on one end, then you can begin marking them. I chose two of my longer pieces and marked them all at 58 inches from the squared end. I marked all the way around in a full circle just to make sure that the mark was easier to see. Once marked, then you're ready to begin cutting the 22 and a half degree angles on your two pipes. I used this miter saw protractor to set the saw. You don't really have to use this if your saw has pre-made slots to set the blade at, but I found that this protractor was very useful. Now when cutting these, you want to make sure to line up the tip of this line right here Good. so see I can I have to move it in just a bit just like that and let's see still could move in I think just a hair but it's close and then that way it'll be 58 from that point over there all the way to this point and this point's going to be the one that's kind of like in contact with the ground so you need that to be a 58. all right let's begin making those 22 and a half degree cuts Alright, so now that you got your two arms done, that's what these are, the ones with the straight cuts at the end, those are going to serve as your arms. That's what your hammock's going to be laying on. And then this piece right here needs to have two slants on it, just like this, but on opposite sides. So one slanted like this, and then the other end is slanted like this, so that you can butt these up and it'll make a 45. Uh, degree across So I'll show you that later Now with this piece that's going to be the ground piece that has two two and a half degree cuts on it we're gonna have to Weld a little piece of angle iron on it so that we keep the angle straight. I'll show you what I mean by that uh, a little bit a little bit later on, but yeah 
you want to have this piece welded on a piece of angle iron so that you get both angles straight because whenever we're, you're working with pipe they tend to roll around and it's a pain in the butt to get it uh, both angles I guess lined up so it's important to put a little piece of angle iron tacked on here and if you don't have any angle iron well see purlin works just as good just gotta cut it off just a little bit make you some angle iron so let's go and do that Once you get your angle iron cut up and ready to go, then you want to head over to your welder and tack that piece on uh, to that middle pipe that you're going to use. And this will help keep the, the pipe straight whenever you're cutting those angles on it. After you make the first cut on this one, this side, and you need to flip it over like this, where the angle iron is up, the bottom of the angle iron is up, so I was like that. And then what you want to do is you want to make this as level as you can, and then also, once you get that level, then you clamp it down over here, whenever it's on the right at the edge of here. We're just gonna shave it right along there. Um, so once you have it leveled and you have this lined up, then you make that cut and should be able to start welding after that. So as you can see, I leveled it out, and got it clamped in there, and then I made my cut. And now it's 55 inches from the bottom to the bottom over there. Before you start welding, it's important to bevel all your pipe. This will lead to stronger welds within the hammock stand and it'll just make for a overall stronger hammock stand that will last a lot longer than without. So that's what you see me doing here in this clip. Once you're finished beveling your pipe, then you can begin welding the frame together. Uh, it's also important to make sure that the angles are correct during this process. So that miter saw protractor that I used earlier in the video came in very handy right here. Now from the center of this weld to this line is three inches. I'm just going to line up the tips of each of these saddles to that line and then I'm going to weld them up. Same on this side in the center of the weld. So there's three inches. I'm just going to weld those legs on. Once you get those legs welded on there and your hammock is starting to look like this, then you can begin working on the rings uh, that you tie the hammocks onto. For this, I used three horseshoes. So I got the horseshoes all cleaned up. Everything all shiny, no longer rusty. I'm going to use these two for the uh, hammock holders, which you tie the rope to and everything. And I don't really like the look of this one with the lines in the middle. So I'm going to try and make it sort of like this. So I'm just going to weld some right in there, in the center. Weld some up at the top and hopefully it'll look a little bit more like these ones. That's the plan anyway.
there we go. Just filled it in right there and ground it down. And then now it's starting to look like a champ. Next up, I'm just gonna cut off a little bit of this. I'm gonna cut off the tip of this so that it's not rounded. And then I'm gonna cut off the rest and then I'm just gonna make it fit in between here and then weld it on there. And then smooth it and everything and then see how it goes from there. Here's the steps I took with the horseshoes and what the finished product looked like. Once I finished both of the horseshoes, then I began working on the caps that I would use to seal off the whole hammock. I'd put them on the ends and weld them on there. Once I got all these caps cleaned up and cut off, then I began welding them onto the hammock. I used the little magnet strip to hold them on there while I just tack them in place. And once they were tacked, then I just welded all the way around and I repeated that process six times. Obviously throughout this whole project there's been a ton of welding so let's just enjoy a montage together. <laughs> Alrighty, with the montage over, it's time to begin cleaning up the hammock, and once that's done, then you just paint it, and then it's ready to be enjoyed. Alright guys, that's just about it. This was the first video I've ever made over a project like this, so please let me know what you thought of it. If you have any criticisms, comments, or complaints about anything, I'd love to hear them in the comments below. Anyway, thanks for sticking around, and I hope you have a great day.